All right, folks, welcome on in to the brand new Ford Mustang Mach-E. Now, I know a lot of folks out there don't like to call this a Mustang, although it does pack a lot of power, much like the current Mustangs at 480 horsepower and some 600 foot-pound of torque. The Mustang Mach-E has a beautiful layout and interior with Elcantara running across the doors and into the dashboard with this beautiful silver stitching. Ford's really known for doing that. In addition to that, we have this absolutely beautiful speaker placed on the dashboard that runs the length of it from left to right. I love that feature. I've never seen a car with a speaker on the dash that's sort of facing towards you. And of course you have this beautiful 15.5 inch display. What Ford's done is added a 10 inch display back here for all your essentials, whether it's high beams, low beams, what gear you're in, how many miles the vehicle has, what's the range on the vehicle. All of that displayed up here, that's really, really important for our Ford customers coming from a regular vehicle that already has this integrated into the new electrification era of the Mach-E. So having this here is a lot nicer than having uh, your current day Tesla where you actually have to look over here and see what's going on. So what Ford's done, like I mentioned, is put it up here in the front of your face so you can actually see what's going on. You don't have to take your eyes off the road and look at the gorgeous 15.5 inch display. Uh, so really, really nice touch. Good job, Ford, with that. Moving on up, of course, you have this beautiful see-through roof and it's an entire piece of glass. Now it is not movable, but it makes the back feel like it's less suffocating. You can really get a good idea of space Spatial awareness by having that roof there, not feeling claustrophobic, and you get a good uh, a good range of what the outside looks like. So it's it really brings the outside atmosphere and the outside energy of nature into that back seat, so you're not feeling like you're claustrophobic. Like I said, we've got this Alcantara all along the seats. Now this is a performance GT, so you'll see these seat backs are actually curved a little bit. And the reason that is, is so it's designed to huddle your body into one position because this thing does have all the power. So really these seats are actually quite comfortable. Uh, they, they snuggle me in here quite well and I feel very comfortable and secure in this seat while I'm ripping on those turns in this Ford Performance GT. Down here at the bottom, we have a wireless uh, charge pad, which is absolutely essential. So long as you have those newer devices that have the ability to wirelessly charge. And so since the floor on this car is completely flat, they've actually added an additional storage space, kind of making this sort of a bridge. And so that gives you some space to maybe put your, your wife's purse or a small handbag, or maybe just some maps or something of that nature. Give you a little bit extra storage room because this is a tighter vehicle, but it does have a lot of space within it. That's one thing Ford's really good about doing is giving you a smaller vehicle, but giving you optimal space within it. So now working on over to this 15.5 inch display, it's absolutely gorgeous, big, big, big giant display. And there's a lot to go over, but I don't wanna overcomplicate things for you. So it's not that complicating to use this device. First and foremost, right here, you have your apps icon. That's gonna pull up things such as your radio, your phone, navigation system, your media, your wireless CarPlay, uh, and your Android Auto. Of course, you have uh, the Trip Energy, the owner's manual here, and you've got a couple games. So while you're sitting and charging, if you wanna play some of these games or have your child play some of these games, you certainly could. And as this vehicle updates over the air, just like your phone does, you may receive more games or more offers to install games on your Mach-E. Uh, that's a really quick, uh, quick menu to get to just a quick couple of apps. Now on your profile, you can edit that. And what'll happen is a number of things will change to your liking. So whether it's seat position, how you drive the car, uh, what mode you drive the vehicle in, it'll all kind of tailor to that. And you'll have a little image of yourself right there. If you want to, you can put a photo there if you'd like. So now coming out of the apps, we have the vehicle icon up here, and this is where you're gonna find a lot of the information that's tailored to not only you as the driver, but how you like your car operated. So we'll tap on that really quickly there. And right here we see drive modes. Now this one's currently set up to engage, but we have a drive mode such as unbridled. So we're unbridling the pony here and we're giving it all the power that she's got. 
It's a really fun mode to drive in. And as you see, it's, it's kind of pulsating. So right now on my main cluster, it's not showing me that it's pulsating, but when I'm in drive and I'm driving down the road, as I put my foot into the accelerator, it'll show me that design. And it's sort of just spreading out as I increase my uh, throttle responsiveness or my accelerator pedal. The other mode here is gonna be engaged now, each of these modes have an eye icon that tell you a little bit about what it does. Uh, and this one says it's balanced for everyday driving and exhilarating fun. So you can certainly put it in that one if you don't want to just go crazy with it. And then whisper mode is obviously going to be your normal, slow driving throttle response mode. Uh, so that's where your driving modes are set up. So further down in this drive modes, we have different additional settings such as one pedal drive. Now one pedal drive is much like driving a golf cart or a bumper car. When my foot is in the pedal, it will go. When I release, it slows the car down by itself. It's using regenerative braking. So it's actually applying and, and using some of the juice that the motors are using to slow down the vehicle. So it's regenerating some power into your battery cell. It is a fun mode to drive in. As we get used to it as a society, you'll find that you'll probably forget how to use a regular car and coast and brake and things of that nature. Moving on down, you have the auto ambient light section. So that's while we're in a driving mode, it'll use that ambient lighting to sort of show that we're increasing in power. And that's a fun one to have on. And then of course we have propulsion sounds. Propulsion sound is, is uh, definitely there for you folks who want a sound in your vehicle. Since we're getting rid of the gasoline engine and we're going into a, an all electric vehicle, some people just want that feeling or that sound to know that they're actually moving forward. So propulsion sound is a really fun mode to turn on if you feel like you need that. Moving on down, we've got 360 degrees of camera. So right here, we're seeing a top view and also we're seeing our front camera, but we can also click just front camera only, or we can click 180 degree. Now I'll have the same exact views while I'm in reverse. And if I quickly go over there, this is what that'll look like. So I've got the 360 degrees and of course I've got the sweeping, so it'll tell me where I'm going. And then of course I've got just a full reverse and then this is going to be your sensing. So it's telling you that there's an object around you. And of course I have the 180 degree, as I just mentioned. So those are some great camera views that you can use while parking or driving your Mach-E at low speeds. I think right around five or six miles an hour, it actually turns off the front camera. So they don't want you to use that to navigate while driving, because obviously using the camera on the main screen, sort of is a play on speed. So it feels like you're going faster than you really are. Moving on down to driver's assistance. Now this one has auto hold. I can place that on and what it will do is it will hold the vehicle in a stationary position when I come to a complete stop. It'll be indicated and I'll show. When I put it in drive, it'll be indicated as ready with a, with a green hand with a circle around it. That's showing you that auto hold is currently enabled. So coming out of that mode there. Now there are additional settings and I'll get to those just here in a minute and they're in the settings tab. But as I move down, I've got access. So I can access the front vehicle from here and I can access the rear of the vehicle from here. Now this vehicle on the front, you it's exactly like popping a, uh, excuse me, it's exactly like popping a hood. So you will pull this lever twice exactly where your hood would normally be at and it will completely unlock it for you. You can then lift it up, throw your water bottles and, and some ice in there or some, you know, some drinks that you want to have. Maybe you're at a car show or a baseball game or a football game and you want to have some cold beverages while you're there on a hot day. Moving on down, we also have uh, the parking. So this one will do parallel, perpendicular, in and out. Um, it's a really nice feature. As mentioned in previous videos, I personally prefer to use the foot on the brake. I don't like the car to move as fast as it wants to move. Um, the car will get infinitely close to an object. It knows its space perfectly. So it will get within, you know, inches of another vehicle. And for sure, while you're in here, your perception of depth isn't as good as the cars is. So you would probably think that you're going to hit that car when all reality you won't. Valet mode's a really important mode, so we can actually select that mode and put in a four-digit pin, 
And by doing so, we're actually reducing the amount of power that the car has while it's in the valet mode. And we're also locking down all of our personal data. That's really important in today's market, really important to a lot of people's personal security. So I'm glad that Ford's add that in there because a lot of these valet companies, they're a third party. They do not work for the restaurant or club or bar that you're going to. So, you know, keeping your personal data where your home is and your friends and all that stuff locked away in the Ford system is a great feature and a great option. I'm glad Ford added that for us. All right, so moving on over to the settings tab now, we'll get a little bit more in depth on the vehicle and its settings. So I'm just gonna swipe up here. And the first thing I have is sound. So I can adjust the sound. I can come over here and I can adjust uh, the treble, the mid range, the bass. I personally have uh, a setting that I, I particularly like, which seems to work really well with the Ford B&O system. Somewhere around there. So take it or leave it if you wanna try it out. Um, and then you've also got radio. So of course we have three rows on here, uh, which is giving you a ton of presets. And I'll show you that a little bit later when we get into the radio settings on this. <clears throat> and of course it has HD radio as well. Moving on down to the phone list. So I can add a, a ton of phones in here. I can make this entire page full of phones. Um, and it's really, really simple to add a phone. You just simply click add phone, put your phone on Bluetooth, and I'll show you that just in a bit as well when we get to the pairing section of this. But if you need to remove someone from your phone's list, right, you're just gonna simply touch this button here and you'll go into settings and you'll hit remove Michael. And we've just gone ahead and removed Michael from this list. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove this other individual here too for the iPhone too. I'm just gonna remove them. And so now I currently have no one in my phone list. So if you, if you ever had a question on how to add or remove, you can certainly do it from phone list. You can have you know your whole family and friends and neighbors in there if you'd absolutely want to. Coming on down to charge here. Now it's showing us what we are currently at, which is 87%, and we have 229 miles. We can click and hold here and reset our driving history, but we can also add things such as departure times. So those are really, really convenient and nice. When your vehicle is plugged into your home, you can have it to where it's set up at, uh, for example, here, I want it set up at 8 a.m. I wanna set it up and I want it to be cold. I'm down here in Houston, Texas, so it's very, very hot early in the day. I want the vehicle to cool the cabin before I get there. So I can set this up Monday, Monday through Sunday at 8 a.m. And then I can also set another departure time on the same day. So at my workplace, if I have EV charging, that's preferably where I'd like you guys to set these up because I want you to pull power from the grid rather than use on your battery power. You don't want to you don't want to really set these up and 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 use the battery's power. You, you it'd be beneficial for you to have it plugged in while you're doing these departure times because you're using the entity's power. So whether that be your home or be your business that you're at you're using their power to heat or cool your vehicle rather than the battery's power to do so. So it'll reach a cooled off temperature by 8 a.m. in this departure time. And so it'll be nice and cooled down, ready for me to leave. I'll simply just unplug, get in the vehicle and go. Moving down to personal profiles. So this is actually a really, really nice feature that Ford has. Personal profiles allow you to set up a key, uh, the volume on the vehicle. You can, you can minimize that or maximize that to whatever you'd like. You can make the seat belt ding. You can add a photo. You can have certain things such as your cruise control options that you prefer to have. But the other thing it'll do is it'll tell you based on the, on the profile, what range you have. For example, if I'm at hundred percent charge, and I am an aggressive driver, it may say that I have 220 miles. And we all know this vehicle currently will do 300 miles per one charge. Uh, so it might say I have 220 because I'm an aggressive driver. So it's automatically gonna say, based on your previous driving history, you're gonna go about 220 miles and that's as far as you can go. 
Now, if you are a, a normal driver and you're driving at speed limits and you're, you know, you're really cautious, you'll probably get that 300 miles and that different profile will state just that. So panning back and forth. So if you've got, you know, your husband, your wife or a significant other or someone else driving the vehicle with you and you create a profile, you can see how they're driving this Mach-E versus how you drive that Mach-E. So it's, it's kind of a snitch tool to sort of tell on you a little bit. <laughs> But it is a nice feature because it will set up, you know, your seats, your mirrors, your steering wheel, all to your preferences, which is actually really, really convenient. So over back into driver's assistance. Now that I'm in the settings tab, I have significant more settings that I can uh, adjust and operate here. Auto hold, we just touched on. I have adaptive cruise control. Now this one has blue cruise technology. So it will hands-free drive here in Houston. All the roads, all the highways have already been mapped out so I can jump out there on the highway and it will hands-free drive on, uh, on the highways around here. Now, Ford is working on getting the entire United States mapped out so that if you have this technology and, you're, and you don't get a Blue Cruise uh, automation show up on your screen and say, hey, would you like me to take over driving for you? It's likely that your highway has not been mapped yet but it will be mapped in the future. So they're trying to get everything done for all everybody out there and make it to where you can use this technology and, and hands-free drive. But the other part of that is lane centering technology. So if you don't have the ability to do your uh, Blue Cruise hands-free driving, you will have lane centering. So it will take all the turns and it is gonna use that data, push it up in the cloud to help make that highway a Blue Cruise highway. So you'll be really helping out Ford uh, to map out those locations while you're using your adaptive cruise control and your lane centering technology. So inside of this though, there's a couple different things that go on here. I have active prompts. So in active prompts, it is as it says, it notifies when Blue Cruise is available. I'm certainly gonna turn that on because it's currently off. So I hit close and I'm gonna turn that on. Speed sign recognition is another type of adaptive cruise control with lane centering. So what speed sign recognition is, is it's physically gonna read the street signs on the highway or your side streets. I would really only use this type of technology while I'm on the highway, not really on the side streets, although it can be done. Prefer you guys use it on the highways. Uh, but speed sign recognition, what it is, is it'll read the street signs and it will actually reduce the speed of the vehicle to that exact speed sign. So as you're going from 65 to a 55 speed zone, it'll automatically decrease that speed to 55. So you're always following the law. But the nice thing is, is you have a tolerance. So uh, if law enforcement isn't too, too picky about you going five miles over the, the speed limit, you can certainly set that to go five over. Uh, if you want to be extra safe and go five under, you can certainly do that. Or if you wanna get super crazy, you can go 20 over or 20 under. If you're gonna do something like that, it's probably best just to not use speed sign recognition and keep it in a normal adaptive cruise control and just set your speed to wherever you want it. Uh, but that's speed sign recognition and that's, it also has a tolerance base in there so you can actually go plus or minus over the speed limit. So when you're setting up profiles and you're setting up your driver's assistance, you can activate speed sign recognition for that particular driver. So the cruise control is only based on speed sign and it will just cruise at that speed sign while they're in adaptive cruise control. If they're not in adaptive cruise control, they essentially can drive as fast as they would like to. Um, in addition to speed sign uh, recognition, we have speed sign limit assist. So we can actually turn this button on and it'll warn us when we are over the speed limits that will be saved into the computer. So what that does exactly, like I said, you're reading the physical street sign and it alerts you when you're ex uh, exceeding that speed. So if you want that enabled under your profile as a driver, you can certainly set that. If you don't, you don't have to. Uh, and that button is really quickly, easily turned on and off. Moving on down the list here, we've got lane keeping system. And this one's currently set up to normal. Um, I will mention that some sensors are a little bit more sensitive than others. That's just a part of the manufacturing process. So if you find that your sensors are a little bit picky and they're really, really sensitive, you can go in here and you can select it to low. Uh, 
Um, if you find that they're not sensitive enough, you can certainly put it on high. I typically find that normal just works out perfect for us uh, here at Ford. And I think they do a great job with, with their manufacturing of sensors, but I have been in some vehicles that are a little bit more sensitive than others. And so if need be, you can adjust those on the fly as you wish. Uh, of course, my intensity is set to normal. Now there are different modes in here. So you have, you have an aid mode, an alert mode, and an alert and aid mode. So what an alert mode will do is it'll vibrate the steering wheel once you've left your lane or are about to leave your lane. Uh, and this is not a part of the adaptive cruise control. I just wanna make that very clear. So while I'm in adaptive cruise control or blue cruise or just lane centering technology, uh, the vehicle is going to center itself in the lane. It's not going to accidentally leave its lane at all. But while I'm not in that mode and I'm driving just down my normal side street, uh, if I accidentally leave my lane, it will vibrate the steering wheel in alert. In aid, it'll pull me back. So it is about a two pound pull. So you can overcome it uh, if you're not a big blinker user. Uh, it's really not that difficult to overpower the system. And once you do, it understands what you're trying to accomplish. But in using the blinker, it will it will not fight you at all. It'll just allow you to take that lane. Of course, it understands that you're trying to get over. In alert and aid, it'll do both. So it will turn the wheel and vibrate it, letting you know, hey, we're trying to we're trying to get into this left lane and and you're not trying to go there. So put your blinker on if you want to go there or if you're not meaning to, I'm going to pull you back and notify you Hey, you almost left your lane, pay attention. Uh, personally, I like to leave mine on aid. I don't like the vibrating. Uh, it, it sometimes can startle some drivers. So I think the aid is a good option. And then if you do not want this feature on while you're on your side streets, the button right here on the steering wheel is for lane centering. We can turn that off while we're on the side streets and we can turn it back on when we're on the cruise control on the highways, when we're using that blue cruise technology or that lane centering technology. Moving on down, we have pre-collision assist. Now this one has distance indicating, all of them do. All the Ford products has distance indicating and all it's gonna say is, as I'm approaching this other object or this other vehicle, as I'm coming close to it, it'll go from a green to a yellow to a red, indicating that you are following way too closely. Uh, it's a graphic that actually shows up here on the center screen, so it can be useful. I kind of sometimes find it to be annoying, to be honest with you. So I don't turn it on, but if you want it on, you can certainly turn that on. Emergency braking is extremely important. Uh, in this graphic here, it's showing you that I'm approaching this vehicle way too fast. If I do not apply the brakes and it's gonna warn me, yell at me, and it's gonna show this image up here on my main screen, uh, it's gonna tell me, hey, put the brakes on, put the brakes on, you're approaching that car way too fast. Uh, and if I don't, it will do it for me. Now, that's not to say that you should let the vehicle do it for you. It is a backup should you not apply the brakes, all right? And then we have the great feature here of evasive steering assist. So in this image here, you're seeing a shoulder on the right-hand side. This vehicle will never, ever, ever take the shoulder. Uh, it does not know how far the shoulder goes. It can go, like I say before, 15 or 15 yards, 15 feet. To the left, it can go two inches. You know, there could be a guardrail right on top of it. So it will never ever take the shoulder using that white line. Uh, it will only be taking the left lane in this, in this diagram. Now, let's assume that you're in the middle lane um, and you've got cars all around you. It will not take any lane. It'll just apply the brakes and try to do it the best it can to avoid that accident. And hopefully you're paying enough attention to where you've already noticed uh, that you're following way too closely and this person in front of us has just applied the brakes. Um, so this type of technology is gonna take place when I am way too close to a person and uh, the vehicle doesn't have the space to brake to avoid an accident. It's gonna use this. Uh, for example though, if I'm in the middle lane again, in this example, there's Someone to my right, someone in front of me just slammed on the brakes. No one to my left, or at least no one within five to six cars to my left, it will take that left lane uh, and move left. So the vehicle is always reading approximately 10 cars out in 360 degrees. So you can rest assured if you have this technology on, it will certainly work. 
if it has the ability and the capacity to move and maneuver around that vehicle. Uh, and the sensitivity is set to normal. That's a good place to have it at. Now again, uh, that one you really can't test unless you absolutely wanted to, but I would say just leave it at normal. If you find out all your other sensors are working out perfectly and normal, just leave this one to normal. If you find out they're more sensitive, you may want to adjust it to low. I would personally just keep this one on normal. Uh, so rear camera delay. So what this is, is it really works best for a manual car. In your manual vehicle, as I got it in reverse and I'm rolling back, I'm, I'm moving back, I like to pop it into neutral and just sort of roll back in neutral. Uh, the rear camera will actually stay on while I'm doing that operation. Uh, in an automatic transmission, I don't really see a need for that. As, uh, as I'm in reverse the entire time and I come to a complete stop, I'm probably going to put it straight into park. I don't need the camera to continue to stay on. But if you found yourself to where you want to roll back in neutral, uh, you can certainly turn that on and you can watch and the camera, the rear camera will stay on as you're rolling back in neutral. So if you'd like that option to stay on, you can certainly do so. Blind spot monitoring system. Uh, we all know it. Uh, it's not an audible sound for Ford. It's going to be an indicator in the mirror on the left and right mirror and uh, it'll flash in yellow and it'll pretty good example is right here uh, so it'll flash in yellow letting you know hey someone's in your blind spot don't get over yet uh, and if you feel like you have enough space make sure you're checking you know over your shoulder be a good driver uh, don't try to cut somebody off so this this technology is, is really great I like that it doesn't do an audible noise again it goes back to I don't want to startle the driver while they're driving the vehicle so I like that Ford does that if your intention is to get over most likely you're looking in that mirror and if you see that yellow lit, then don't get over. Cross traffic alert. This is a really, really awesome feature. I love this one. As I'm backing out of this spot in this, in this uh, diagram here or this image here, you see this vehicle is approaching. If I can't see that vehicle just by looking over my shoulder or using the reverse camera, uh, and it's likely probably due to me having a large vehicle to the left or right, depending on how I'm backing up, and I just can't see beyond it, the vehicle can. So if it's a person, pedestrian, bicyclist, motorcyclist, car, truck, or SUV, it sees that vehicle back there or that object moving, it's gonna first alert you that something's moving. If you do nothing, it'll automatically apply the e-brake to avoid you from hitting that object or that person. Reverse brake assist. Um, I don't really think this is a great description of it. Um, some people might. So it says when reversing and reverse, uh, this feature mitigates collisions by applying the brake automatically. Um, what I find in a lot of the Ford vehicles is it shows someone parallel parking. Uh, I think where I've seen it work most is as I'm moving backwards, let's say uh, I'm parking in a garage for a good example. I'm parking in a garage there is an object really close to the left rear side of my bumper and it, the vehicle thinks I might hit it. If it thinks I might hit it, it will apply the brakes for me. Um, another example, if I'm backing up in the garage and I'm coming really close to that rear wall, it'll apply the brakes if it thinks I might hit it. So as objects become close to the car, as I'm in reverse backing up, it'll automatically apply the brakes just to avoid you from getting into an accident. Now, I don't want you guys to rely on all this technology. It's there for a backup. So in case you have uh, made a mistake or your brain is fatigued and you've had a long day, uh, I want this technology to be here to sort of protect you in a time when you're not really paying attention. So don't use it on a daily basis. Oh, I'll just let the car stop. That's not a, a really good frame of reference or a frame of mind that you should be in to, to use this technology. Use it in a pinch. Uh, use it uh, as needed. When it happens, it happens. It works for you. Uh, and so that way you don't make a mistake while you're driving these vehicles. Driver alert. So on this lane keeping system, as I'm taking that side road and I'm leaning outside my lane too many times, that may happen if I'm not using my blinker a lot. It'll tell me to stop and get a cup of coffee because I'm obviously tired. Uh, so <laughs> I like that little feature that Ford's added there for us. 
All right, so now we're gonna move on into the vehicle settings. So moving on down to vehicle settings, there is a lot of different things that we can now change in here, which are absolutely amazing that Ford has now allowed us to change so many different parameters of the vehicle that suit us individually more comfortably than not. Uh, number one, up here we have the vehicle power down timer. Uh, so what that'll do is it'll power down the vehicle when no one's using it or if it's just sitting for too long. Uh, I believe the timer is gonna be 30 minutes. Uh, and so it'll power down that vehicle should nothing be happening within it. Uh, and that's to conserve energy for the battery pack, right? Uh, rear occupant. So this is if you leave someone in the rear of the seat. So this is basically uh, for all those stories that you've heard of people leaving their children in the back of their car and they just totally forget about their child being there. Ford's gone ahead and added a rear occupant alert and it will be a child safety seat that appears. If you don't have children and you just are tired of seeing that uh, the message display, you can simply turn that one off uh, and it's gone ahead and tell us that it will check back in with us uh, twice a year in case we want to turn it back on. Easy entrance access. So this is going to be with seat adjustment. Uh, what happens here is uh, the seat will actually move back and down to allow me to get out of the door uh, with ease. And in some cases, depending on where the steering wheel is positioned, it will also push the steering wheel up and in. I think the steering wheel in this position currently is all the way up and in, so we're okay with where it's at now. My key. Uh, you can create a vehicle key that will basically limit the parameters of the vehicle. So limit the mile an hour, continuously uh, use the chime for the seat belt, limit the volume on the vehicle. There's a lot of different features that you can use with my key. It's basically taking one of the two administered keys and forcing one to be li uh, limited. So if I have uh, an employee that's going to drive this vehicle, a uh, you know, a, a child that's going to drive this vehicle. I may want to limit their access to how much power the vehicle has. I may want to limit their access to the volume knob. Uh, I may want it to chime until they plug in that seatbelt, uh, just to annoy them and ensure that they're being safe in the vehicle. So my key will do that. Uh, if you lose your, if you lose your primary key, the uh, administer key in this example and you have the my key set to limitations, unfortunately, you will have to get another key programmed to the vehicle to then unprogram the my key key. So um, there's just no other way about it. You have to have both keys in order for that to unprogram a, a set of parameters on one that has been programmed. So that would be my key. Uh, the onboard, um, the onboard modem that is uh, allowing this vehicle to have 4G Wi-Fi for up to 150 feet outside the vehicle. That is a really great feature if you find yourself, uh, you know, working from your vehicle or going out there camping or, you know, maybe going to the beach where there's absolutely no internet, maybe finding a place that has, uh, is very desolate and there's absolutely no Wi-Fi service. AT&T will provide uh, the service for this. It's approximately $20 a month unlimited data. Don't quote me on that, but uh, you can definitely get quotes from them and they will need this onboard serial number to activate your modem now through Ford Pass, uh, the application that basically is essential on this vehicle. Uh, you will get a three gig or three month complimentary trial. So you can test it out and make sure that it works for you and make sure it's something that you wanna purchase uh, but uh, that'll become, uh, that'll come to you brand new when you purchase the vehicle brand new. The alarm system, it's already pre-set up to be really nice. I am actually gonna turn this off. I do not want uh, to be asked whether I want the alarm system activated. Now, coming from Ford, they're already turned off and it has all sensors currently on. And there was an indicator stating the vehicle is going to shut off in 30 seconds. I click the OK button and told it, no, go ahead and stay on. Um, and so I don't want it to ask me to uh, to prep the alarm system on this vehicle. So it's basically by me turning that off when I exit the vehicle, it's already going to be set up. I don't have to uh, turn it on. It's going to already be on. Moving on down from that, I've got a remote start setup so I can do it to last climate control settings. Typically, I like to have this one on auto. Um, 
And the reason being is because a lot of people uh, who own these Ford vehicles or if this is your first time buying a Ford vehicle, you're probably not gonna go into these settings and adjust them very often. You're just gonna kind of set it one time and then it's gonna set up to the way you like your vehicle configured and you're gonna leave it that way. So by having it in auto, uh, when I remote start the vehicle, either from my Ford Pass or from my key, it will uh, it'll try to reach 72 degrees internal temperature. That is a temperature that Ford has found is comfortable for just about every human on the planet. And so it'll set it for 72 degrees. So whether it's hot or cold outside, it's gonna try to reach 72 degrees. If I have it on last setting, and a freeze comes and I have it here in Texas and we have had a freeze in the past. So um, if I have it set to 60 degrees and it's 32 outside, this vehicle will only warm up to 60 degrees. It will not warm to that comfortable zone of 72. Uh, so preferably I like to keep it on auto. Uh, you may set it to your last settings if you prefer it that way. Uh, so steering wheel and uh, seats, they're also set to auto. So basically uh, that will turn on the heated seats in this vehicle because it does not come with air conditioned seats. So it'll turn the heated seats on, the heated steering wheel if necessary. If it's really cold outside, it'll go ahead and prep those surfaces for me to come in and sit in here comfortably. The duration is set for 15 minutes. That is the max. That's the way it comes preset from Ford. Uh, we can change that if we'd like to anywhere from 15 to 10 to 5. Uh, but through the Ford Pass app, you can also click plus additional 15 down here in Texas. It's pretty warm. So uh, if I'm in a dark colored car, I may need to click an additional 15 minutes just to ensure that it's at a nice cozy temperature for me on the inside of the cab. Windows. So we can go into windows and we can have them on remote open or close. And basically what that is, is I can use the key fob and I can hold it for uh, the, the unlock button for three seconds and it will roll down the windows. I can do the same thing on the lock and it will roll up the windows. Over here on wipers, this is one thing that Ford doesn't ever turn on. I don't know why, but I'm gonna turn them on on this vehicle. So rain sensing, this one someone turned on. It's definitely always, always off and then courtesy wipe. So if you if you want those features enabled on your vehicle, you'll have to go in here, you'll have to click wipers and click courtesy wipe and uh, rain sensing. And then just for giggles, we'll add on the reverse wiper. Why not? It's it's there, I like those, I like those creature comforts in this vehicle. Power lift gate, so it's switch enabled. Uh, we're gonna leave that on. Uh, for the lighting system on this vehicle, it's gonna have automatic high beams and automatic daytime running lights. So the nice LED headlights in the front, how they're illuminated during the day. But when it starts to become dusk outside, they really glow and it really shows a, an aggressive look on this vehicle. So I personally would like to leave those on. And then welcome lighting. So as we approach the vehicle, it's gonna notice our presence based on the key. And so it's gonna give us welcome lighting. It's gonna light up the mirrors, light up the vehicle, stating that I am uh, being greeted to the Ford Mach-E. So I like that feature to be on as well. Moving on down from lighting, we have locks. So now this one, uh, this one's really great uh, that we're able to now modify a certain things in here. So audible feedback, if I have the vehicle running and I get outside the vehicle, uh, all doors are closed then after, uh, the Ford vehicle honks twice, indicating that you've left it on and the key has also left the vehicle. Um, and if you hate that feature, which I find a lot of folks do, it's really there just to sort of remind you that the vehicle's on and you've left it on. But if you know your Ford vehicle and you know you're intentionally leaving it, you can turn off audible feedback and it will stop doing that double tap horn um, when you've left the vehicle running and you're just simply going into the house or into your friend's house, knocking on the door. Uh, you don't want uh, the horn to honk twice, basically telling your, your friends that you're gonna go pick up, hey, hurry up, I mean, that can be slightly annoying, but if you want that feature off, you can simply turn it off here. You have the walk away lock, so it'll automatically lock when you walk away. That is a great feature. I'd probably leave that one on. Uh, the miss lock chirp, so if a door is slightly ajar um, and, uh, and you hit the lock button, it will notify you that uh, there's a mislock on the vehicle because a door is slightly ajar. So I'll keep that one on as well. 
and then auto unlock. So as I approach a vehicle and I grab that door handle or click that button, it'll automatically unlock the vehicle because the key is cer certainly present with me. Um, the other nice feature outside of this one here, so exterior lighting feedback, that's again, as I'm approaching the vehicle, it's a part of the welcome. So I wanna leave that feature on. The auto uh, unlock all doors. So we're finding that a lot of folks nowadays, they wanna leave it on the driver door uh, just due to uh, an increase of crime rate maybe in your area where uh, I'm sure we've all seen the videos where someone walks up to their vehicle and as they click the unlock button, a passerby jumps in and uh, they try to, you know, unfortunately rob those folks. So we now have the ability to, to click it here on the infotainment system before you could still do it. It's just a series of buttons on the key fob that you're going to click to enable it to only unlock the driver door. But now with the Sync 4 system, we can select it on driver door only. What I have found is I can go to the passenger door with the key fob and it will only unlock the passenger door and leave all other doors locked. Uh, so I don't think it's uh, necessarily accustomed to the driver door. I've found that some Ford vehicles will unlock other doors so long as the key is present with you uh, while trying to unlock that door. So I definitely am probably gonna leave this feature on because I know uh, in this area, unfortunately, the, the crime rate has gone up. So people are really gonna appreciate having that ability to just unlock the one door rather than all. I still find some folks want all doors unlocked because they have a large family and so thus you can get in there and click all doors. Uh, for mirrors, we can click on auto fold. That's the only option that's under our mirror option. If you have a current Ford vehicle and you believe that you have uh, the ability to auto fold them and you're on the Sync 4 system, you'll go into the vehicle settings and scroll down to mirrors and click the auto fold button on. It is not pre-set up from Ford, so that's definitely something uh, you or your salesperson can do and make sure that that auto fold is on. So basically when I get outside the vehicle, I've parked it, I click the lock button, the mirrors will then fold for me. So I definitely uh, encourage you to do that. Door code, so long as I have my original door code, I can enter it in here and I can customize it from here. Uh, that's a really nice feature. Um, some people get confused on doing it manually on the door code itself, which is simply you enter the original factory door code, you click the button one, uh, press the button number one, and then you'll enter a new five digit code and then press one to save. The locks will cycle indicating that it had, it had taken your new code. Um, if that's not what you wanna do, you can certainly do it from here. So you can enter in the original factory door code and then enter a new five digit uh, code and it will save. You can always use the original and your new one should you forget your new one. So you can always go back to either one. You can never erase the original factory code in the vehicle. So uh, should you forget that old code or, or you're getting this vehicle for the first time as a pre-owned vehicle, so long as you can obtain that original door code, you can modify it any way you want. Now the tire mobility uh, kit, what this is, is it's an inflation system. It does come with a bag. Uh, you do not get a spare tire, unfortunately, with these vehicles. Um, and so in the inflation kit, you will get this, uh, you'll get this liquid that, uh, so hopefully if you have a nail and not a large gash, you can use it to uh, inflate the tire and it will try to patch it from the inside out just to get you to that then tire shop where they can pull it out and put a real plug in it. Um, the mobility kit is good for four years, but you it will expire. So check your pack uh, on the vehicle to ensure that uh, the expiration date is at the four year term. So if you buy this vehicle a few years from now, uh, this still may be selected. So basically we wanna make sure that we're putting in there that I have one year expectancy. And so once it comes to expire, it'll notify you and throw you a message on the main screen here that, hey, your inflation tire system kit is no longer good to actually seal uh, from a puncture. Backup passcode. So once you've Finalize the purchase of your vehicle. You can put a backup passcode should you use your phone as a key. So first thing first, you do have to start setting up your phone as a key and then backup passcode will illuminate for you. Um, 
And basically what that is, is if my phone dies, I'm at the grocery store, I know my door code, I can punch in that door code, get in the vehicle, but if I don't have a backup passcode, I can't start the vehicle. If you do have a backup passcode, you can use that backup passcode to temporarily start the vehicle and then use that phone wireless charge pad, charge the phone and get to your final destination. Uh, some folks are just gonna keep the key um, because they don't wanna deal with their phone dying. Uh, but if you're one of those folks, because now all of our homes can now be integrated with our phones now, and you can use it Bluetooth connectivity to unlock your front door or Alexa or you know Google Assistant. Uh, so there's a lot of integration to where we're starting to get away from hard keys. And so if you're one of those folks who wanna get rid of their keys, you'll definitely wanna set up a backup password, uh, passcode, excuse me, for you to enter should your phone die and you need to leave that then grocery store. So very, very important step when you're setting up your key, this will then illuminate. It's grayed out currently because I don't wanna set up a key on this vehicle currently. Brake coach, so what it does is it's actually gonna score you based on the way you are braking the vehicle. Now, while using these brakes, now this vehicle has beautiful red caliper Brembo brakes. They also do regenerative braking. So while I'm using the brakes, it's actually generating power for the battery pack, increasing my distance and range. Uh, but it's gonna show you a score there. So I can tell you from firsthand experience, uh, if my fiance had this car, it would probably give her like a zero because she has no idea on how or what coasting is in a vehicle. It's just gas brake, gas brake. So if you find yourself uh, in a similar situation with uh, your significant other, maybe the brake coach will teach her how to brake properly um, and give her that uh, judgmental score that she needs, that, uh, that check from a different uh, individual, such as this EV vehicle. So uh, yeah, as we all know, uh, you know, when talking to our significant other, they, they don't really take our advice, even though it may be right. They have to hear it from someone else. So in this case, this mach -E is gonna tell her what she needs to know, <laughs> quite literally. Uh, but that's brake coach, so it'll it'll actually, it'll judge you and, and, and give you a rating based on the way you're braking with this vehicle. Um, moving on to low battery. From Ford, it is currently set up at 50 miles. That's exactly where I'd leave it. Uh, I want it to warn me when I'm at 50 miles of range left. I don't want it to warn me necessarily when I'm at 20. I may not have enough space to make it to that next charging station. So if I'm not paying attention where I don't have a, a, a trip enabled where it's actually set up uh, charging stations along my route, uh, then I definitely want to have that enabled just so I'm aware I'm about to run out of energy on this vehicle. And then of course, driving history again, we can click and hold that button and it'll reset our EV driving history. Uh, and so that'll put you back at, uh, at, a, at, a, at a new range. And so basically you'll be teaching yourself, essentially when you first get these vehicles, you're probably gonna floor them everywhere they go because they are just stupid fast. Um, and thus your range will go down significantly. But uh, once you get more familiarized with it and you want to get more range out of it, you've, you've kind of, you know, are tired of having the fun with it, you can reset that and it will relearn your driving habit per your profile if you have profiles set up or just per you as a driver if you have zero profiles set up. So that is where you would redo that. And then, of course, we can change our speedometer to uh, kilometers per hour over miles an hour should we need to. If you're outside of the United States, you may use uh, you know, kilometers per hour. I know Canada does for sure. Uh, so that may be you and this is where you can turn that feature on. All right, so moving on down to general. Uh, so in this settings, we can change things such as language, uh, units of measure, whether it's uh, for miles an hour, kilometers per hour. I can change my PSI from uh, PSI to KPA or to bar, uh, depending on where you are located uh, throughout the world, you may want to have those units of measure rather than uh, you know the, uh, the standardized system here in the United States. You can also change Fahrenheit to Celsius. Uh, you can change your languages uh, currently only at three, but 
As I should mention, this system is updatable over the air, so they may airdrop new languages and the Ford system will talk to you and you will be able to read in that language. None of it will be English whatsoever. So if I changed it now, I'd be, I'd be lost in the sauce. Uh, so we've got habla espanol here and la France. So I can't speak either of those languages or read them. So I will not be changing, uh, I will not be changing that unit of language. I'm gonna leave it right there. But should you need to, that's where you would do that. Uh, the auto beep, so the screen beep, not the auto beep, excuse me. The screen beep, so every time I touch a button, it goes beep, beep, beep. If you hate that sound, you can certainly turn it off. I know some people on their phones, they don't like the tactile buttons when they're hitting the text, so they turn that feature off. That would be pretty much essentially the same thing, so you can turn that system off. This one's about the Sync 4 system, obviously licensing and uh, submit feedback. You can do that and you can send it straight to Ford. Maybe give them some ideas uh, on uh, some future updates that you'd like to see in your Mach-E. And then of course you've got Reset, which is Master Reset. It will completely erase everything in the vehicle, resetting everything back to factory. So none of your personal data or presets will actually exist after that. None of your radio presets or anything of that nature will be there. It'll all be completely reset, including the Ford Pass. So. If you're one of those individuals out there that uh, have Ford Pass right now and you're having a really hard time connecting it, uh, you may have to do a factory reset, sadly, and then also delete and remove the vehicle from your Ford Pass app. Um, and that usually remedies the issue. So you can then add the vehicle back to, fa uh, to your Ford Pass app, and then you can add it to the vehicle itself by activation. So usually that's the remedy. Um, I do have some customers that come in from time to time that somehow they've they've got stuck with uh, not connecting with the vehicle through Ford Pass, and I find that to be the remedy there. So, moving on down to uh, the display. So, of course, we've got a calm display, which is going to just basically dark out this entire screen here and show me a time, and it looks very much so like this. If I tap on it, I've got to go back into the settings where I was. So I click over to settings and I'll go down to, oh, I'm already there, excuse me, display. I can change the brightness from here. I can also change it from the left side of the vehicle uh, near your, um, your headlight dial. There is a plus and minus for bright and dimness there. Uh, I can also change the instrument cluster from light, or I'm sorry, from dark to light. Um, I'm actually gonna put this on automatic. So as it becomes dark outside, it'll automatically make this dark with white outlines, right? White lettering, everything like that. If I have it on light, it's gonna turn everything to a darker tone, such as like a gray or a black, and then I'll have blue outlining for lettering and, and, and things of that nature. So leaving it on auto is gonna be probably the best for your eyes. Um, if you do tend to like it one way or the other, you certainly could put it on dark. I think you may be able to save some, uh, some range by having it on dark, possibly. Um, and then for the center, obviously auto is what's set here. So you can turn that to light. So in the daylight, if I drove this vehicle outside, this is exactly the way it would look, uh, just to kind of give me a little bit brighter screen so I can see where I'm navigating. And then at night, it will turn to this dark mode uh, in which I like to have it on auto. So. It'll do all that stuff for you as you go under underpasses. It'll flip flop on you, um, things of that nature. As dusk comes in and your headlights come on, these will also flip for you automatically. Moving on over to clock. So you can set this up on a 24 hour mode. This one will automatically update to uh, the time zone for daylight savings. So plus or minus an hour there. So uh, that'll update for you automatically and uh, you can set it up however you'd like. And then of course, time zone is usually associated with this. I think this one does need a, an update because uh, we recently just did the Ford Lightning and time zone was included. So this one doesn't have it right now. It probably needs to go ahead and have an update. Connectivity, move it on over there. So Bluetooth devices, um, obviously I can change the name of my Mach-E if I want to. I can remove the Mustang, which most people want to do anyway for these vehicles. Um, 
and uh, I can just call it a Maki. I can call it, you know, Nathan's Maki. I can call it, you know, Sam, George, Billy's Maki. I can do however I want. I can rename that. So as I'm trying to pair it to the system, I know it's my Maki versus, you know, my friend's Maki. Uh, you've also got wireless app projection. So this is just showing you what the Wi-Fi would be if you pushed it from this vehicle. Um, it's got a network name and of course you've got a password that's protected. You can reset that uh, and that's all going to be set up through the onboard modem and uh, you connecting that through your external services such as AT&T. So moving on down, we have the Wi-Fi networks. Now Wi-Fi I'm going to enable and I'll explain to you why. Uh, on view available networks, what you want to do is actually set this vehicle up so it can update but you want it to update when you want it to update, not whenever it wants to update. So when we get down to system settings, we can schedule a time uh, Monday through Sunday when we want it to update. Um, and that's very important because there are gonna be driving updates, which allow you to drive the vehicle. And then there's gonna be non-driving updates, which uh, will annoy you until you actually drive uh, the update into the vehicle. So. Uh, putting your home Wi-Fi on here is absolutely essential um, and you can see the type of Wi-Fi connectivity that this vehicle is currently finding. Uh, so do that, click on it, add your mobile network, or excuse me, add your Wi-Fi network to this vehicle so that it will update automatically. All right, so moving on down from connectivity, we're gonna go to vehicle Wi-Fi hotspot. And so this vehicle is currently enabled. Now, I, like I mentioned before, through the Ford Pass app, you can enable that, uh, that free complimentary service, find out if you like it, and then through here, you can find out which devices are, are, are currently on the network. You can block devices, you can connect devices from here. You can go through things such as settings, like looking at the password, show the, show the password here, so I'm gonna show it because this is one that's pre-set up from Ford. This is my mobile network, right? This is the password. Um, and this is the security type, you know, the Mac IP address, a number of different things within this system. Now, one thing uh, you may be able to edit in here is you can edit and change the name of the network if you want to. You can edit and change the password if you want to, and you can change the bandwidth to uh, five gigahertz. So if you wanna do that, that's what I would set it up for personally. Um, you know, some people may have some other ideas on how they want their setup, but that is that is the way to manage the Wi-Fi itself. Um, of course, you have, uh, excuse me, settings. We already went through that. Uh, the data usage, so we can see who's using what data. If, uh, if Harry over there is using up all my data watching Netflix, I'm gonna have to, you know, go down here and kick him off the network. Tell him to use his own Wi-Fi hotspot for his tablet. Um, and then of course, if you need to help getting started, you can click a get started and it will show you how to go through all of that uh, if you're not too technical on uh, network settings and getting those started for you. Also, if you need help with this, I don't wanna guarantee it, but AT&T should be able to walk you through part of that on how to set that up. But I just did for you. So if you wanna manipulate and change things, uh, you can certainly do it from there. System updates. Now this one's gonna do it automatically on the Mach-E. Uh, if you want to schedule your updates, you're going to have to do that through Ford Pass. So if I didn't mention that before, you can schedule your updates through the Ford Pass app and you can say, you know, Monday through Sunday, I want you to start updating my vehicle, you know, around three o'clock in the morning when I'm for surely in bed or uh, I'm just not in my vehicle. Now, if you're that night shift individual, um, you may want to switch it to sometime during the day when you are resting and sleeping. And just so what this does, it just enables the vehicle to do updates while you're not using it. So that would be uh, the best way to set that up. Now, mobile apps, moving on down to that, those are going to come from your phone. So it'll tell you which ones you can manipulate and use. I'm not sure. Uh, oh, that's right. I don't have a mobile device uh, currently connected, so I don't see mobile apps and it's grayed out currently. So once I connect the phone, it'll start listing some applications here. Um, while you're using your wireless CarPlay or Android Auto, uh, you basically will have access to all the apps. And when you're, for, for the first time you're using either of those, 
it'll ask you to go to the app store and it'll give you a list of what apps are available to use while you're using your CarPlay system. So those types of things are um, limited per Ford, but they're also limited per Apple CarPlay. They, they tend to choose applications that will be quick and easy, useful tools, not so much like YouTube or Netflix, because they don't want you to become distracted drivers. However, uh, a little birdie has told me that uh, Ford Lightning and the Mach-E may eventually get an update to where you can use Netflix while charging. So for those, uh, you know, 20, 30, 40 minute uh, sit downs while you're charging, uh, you can certainly then maybe watch those Netflix videos and, uh, you know, just make good use of your time. Departure and comfort. Uh, we've already touched on this. This is just kind of the main screen for it. So we can click the edit button down here and we can set up a time uh, at the beginning of the day on Monday and at the end of the day at Monday when I want the vehicle to be prepped and ready for it to go. When I jump in it, I'm ready to leave. Uh, so not, not to touch on that one one more time, uh, just, just real quickly there. 911 assist, if you want this enabled, you certainly can. The eye icon will tell you everything you need to know about anything within uh, the settings of these. Uh, and it'll tell you that it will attempt to make a 911 service call and in, in, the, in the event that you get into an accident um, and, and an emergency setup, it'll download contacts to, to then call you know, your loved ones to let you know that you've been in an accident um, and hopefully you're okay. Being that these vehicles don't come with engines and that momentum of weight is not being pushed into the cabin, as we all know, EV vehicles are really, really, really safe because we can add a lot more structural integrity to the outside of them, making them uh, very, very safe to drive, quite honestly. Ford uh, assistance is next here, so I can, I can put a wake word on here, and so it already has preferred words it would like you to use, so things such as OK Ford, uh, OK Ford Pass, and there she goes, kind of already waking up for us. Um, you can use these. These are going to adapt to your voice just like your phone does. So uh, if you're meeting a person for the first time, sometimes you may say things uh, a little differently than others. Maybe you might slur it or not pronounce it uh, po uh, properly. And um, if that's the case, obviously your phone is really good at, at learning you and your voice and how you say words. So a lot of us will do uh, talk over text and uh, the phone does a really good job at understanding what we're saying but if you're in a different part of the United States or in a different country uh, sometimes folks have you know different accents and things of that nature so uh, if you allow this to take place Ford will really start to pick up on on what you're saying and how you say it and it'll learn it exactly like your phone has learned you now so you can turn on a wake word if you want to or you don't have to uh, you can turn on advanced modes and what advanced modes are is it reduces the amount of voice prompts uh, So it gives you uh, the ability to speak sooner um, And so you can set up on the advanced mode. I'm going to turn it off. Um, I like the Ford's uh, integration um, She does a pretty good job at listening to what I want her to do uh, But I tend to still stick to my phone um, and, and use that feature more than more than not so there are also command lists you can go through on those and, uh, and you can sort of tell her certain commands that you want uh, her to, to listen to for keywords and phrases. Moving on down from there, we have ambient lighting now. In this car, we can pick all the colors we want. Um, we'd really like to see Ford bring this to all the other F-Series uh, F and all the other SUVs within the Ford lineup. Uh, they've really done away with this ambient lighting with color, but on the Mach-E, especially on the GT Performance, you will get the ambient lighting and you can change it to colors like magenta, blue, green, red, purple, you know, whatever you want. And uh, this is effectively the brightness by adjusting this. And you can see in this cabin description here, as I'm adjusting the brightness of that color. Oops. And I can show you that... Uh, one thing Ford's done is I can be completely off that dial and I can move this wherever I'd like to. And the reason they've done that, as long as your finger's still on the screen, 
is because while I'm driving, if I want to turn on my heated seat, for example, and I'm not really paying attention to it because I need to pay attention to the road, I can click it and if my finger draws off the screen somewhere else, uh, it'll still go up or down as you originally intended. So Ford, good job on that. Uh, really appreciate you doing that. And that is it for the settings. Now for the big stuff, uh, moving into the navigation system. This is probably, uh, you know, the, the biggest portion to this car and, and owning an EV vehicle as well. So obviously on the map, I can see that um, I have a charge station here at this, uh, at this Ford dealership at Mackay Ford here in Houston. And uh, as you should, but as I draw out on this, just pinching out, I can get a really good frame of reference of how far I can go at my current charge. And my current charge being 87%. So let me give you a better view on this. I'm gonna go ahead and change this screen to bright. So I'm gonna go into settings. I'm gonna go over to settings on this side. So I'm gonna go click on the vehicle, excuse me, and then I'm gonna click on settings and I'm gonna go to display and uh, for, for this demonstration, I am going to turn this to light. So we have a better visibility on this. So I'll go ahead and close that out. Now you have a better visibility for what we're doing here. I can see this ring and in this ring is gonna tell me on the current charge at 228 miles, I can make it anywhere with inside this ring. Now, if I wanna go outside this ring, so let's say, uh, let's say I pick this waypoint, just a random waypoint, and I wanna say go. It's gonna start calculating how to get there and how much charge I need to get outside of that ring. So I'm gonna let it do its calculating. Okay, traffic laws, be alert and use voice commands while driving. And it's gone ahead. Please drive to highlighted route. It's gone ahead and done the trick for me. So it says it's gonna be a five hour and 36 minutes. Um, I can actually go back into that by clicking this button. I can show some other features. So I'm gonna to go to overview. I can get back into that screen and I can click details. So by clicking details, it's gonna tell me when I get to this charge station, I'm going to sit there for approximately 15 minutes and I'm gonna charge from 46% to 62%. Uh, and then this is through Electrify America. This is the preferred uh, charge that this vehicle is selected for us. And then also through Electrify America at another Walmart Supercenter, I'm gonna go then go from 20, for 25 minutes, I'm gonna go from 19% to 53%. And then at my final destination, I will have 15% left to charge. So assuming at my final destination, I will be charging the vehicle. That's one thing you guys need to, to plan while you're doing these trips is uh, you're planning that at your end destination, whether it's a hotel, a friend's house, or your house, that you are going to charge at that final destination because you are going to be very limited once you get there. Now, if I knew I was going to tootle around town while I'm there, when I get to that final location, I'll probably put more charging emphasis on this one here. I'll probably, instead of going to 53%, I'll probably go to 80%. So you can stay longer than you'd like to. It's just, you got to remember uh, the time in which I make it there uh, is going to be a little bit later in the day. So keep that in mind. And then if you wanted a turn-by-turn -turn list, you can certainly do so. So this is a turn-by-turn, -turn, much like uh, if you remember MapQuest, which I don't believe anyone uses anymore. Turn-by-turns, it'll let me know exactly every turn on, that uh, on the directional map and where I'm going. So those are really great feature, really great option to use is to have that over there on the side. And then of course it's telling me where I'm gonna charge, how much I'm gonna need to get to my final destination and which chargers I'm gonna use. Now going back into this, it says two chargers, right? So if I click on this one, I can look at details. And so it says, because I'm not connected through, um, because I'm not connected through my Blue Oval network currently on this vehicle, which you definitely need to do, you'll set up your credit card one time and it will actually bring a 
bunch of different charge uh, companies into an umbrella under that application. So instead of downloading every single charge company's uh, app and creating uh, an account and then setting up your credit card on those and then just going wherever they wherever you see them available you can set up your credit card one time and everything gets integrated into the blue oval program so we can do things such as charge and go uh, through through uh, the blue oval program you can click that which means I can plug in my vehicle it'll charge me for as long as I'm sitting there and as soon as I connect it or disconnect it a charge will come right out of my my uh, credit card. I do not have to ever get out, go see the teller, swipe my card, nothing. It reads through that system, it'll read the VIN number and then go to your forward pass and then it'll charge that card that way. Now it's saying at that location, it's a level three charger. So if you're not familiar with EV and you're really just, it's your first time getting started with it, when you see the lightning bolt with three bars underneath of it, that means it's level three. It's gonna be the fastest charging that you can possibly get. If you happen to see one that's a level two, it'll be one tick less. And then level one is essentially you plugging in on your home on a, uh, on a charge station on your 110 outlet. So it's really not, really not all that effective in getting you to your final destination really, really quickly. So level three is, uh, level three is the recommended, uh, recommended source for you to charge really quickly and then get back on the road. And you can do that to any one of these and kind of just see and it will zoom in on that location as well. So that's trip overview. This is a quick way for you to see how big of a charge you have and how far you can go, this, this beautiful ring. So according to this, I have the range to get into the Gulf of Mexico. Some cases it will actually, it'll cut this part off and it'll start to make this weird shape around um, around the distance in which your car can go. So you may not always see a circumference there, a circle. Uh, you might see a different shape and that's just because you're probably on less of a charge than what we're currently sitting at. So just keep that in mind. If you don't see the circle, it's still gonna show you the furthest distance you can go out and it will be this blue ring, but it may not take the shape of a ring, all right? So that's really quickly the navigation system on the vehicle. It's actually really, really impressive. It is imperative that you do hook up that Blue Oval network. When you do so, Electrify America will give you 250,000 kilowatt hours to charge from for free, just for signing up and creating a, an account and setting up your credit card. That's a really nice uh, gesture on their behalf. And it's also to sort of promote their brand. They are one of the better and faster charge ports for, uh, for the Ford electric vehicle and other vehicles. There are adapters out there for Tesla fast charging stations. So uh, there are adapters that can adapt with this vehicle's outlet. And uh, you can go to a Tesla charge station and charge off of, that, off of their supercharge stations if you should need to. So just know that uh, when you do plan your trip out, it'll show you the charge stations along the way, as well as as you approach them, it'll let you know which ones are available. So if there's 15 charge stations at, uh, let's say that Walmart Supercenter, uh, it'll let us know, hey, four of the 15 are available. You can just pull up and jump into one of those. So kind of, uh, kind of a nice touch considering you'll probably be there for you know at least 15, 20 minutes, maybe even 30. All right, so moving on from the navigation system, one last thing on the navigation system though, I can click this little arrow in the top and I can actually make it smaller. And these are the quick menus for the apps up here. So if I, uh, for example, if I go to Android Auto, uh, it'll show up my, that my recent was navigation. So those are really nice. And then also if you wanna remove any of these, you can just simply drag and delete, or if I want to enable those, I can pull them to the top. And then uh, once they're up there, of course, I can also hit the expand button. And so in this reference, this will, I'll show you a bit later, this will be what the CarPlay looks like. It'll take up this entire space, which is actually quite convenient. Um, but uh, for now, I'm gonna move you into the radio section. So I'm just gonna tap it, I'll pull up the radio and uh, a couple quick things here. So within the radio system itself, I have some presets down here. Now, if I hit the expand button, I have even more. So I have about 15 
presets all down here. And of course, if I have a particular station, I can simply type it in here if I would like to. Um, I can seek left or right if I want to, and also I can hit the plus button if I wanna just go individually slowly. Uh, and so that's a really quick way to describe the FM and AM. Now Sirius XM is Sirius XM. Everyone knows what, uh, what Sirius XM is about. Uh, so for example, I mean, we've got football training on here, but if I wanted to save over that, I can, I can swipe and let's say, uh, let's say comedy greatest hits, why not? I can click and hold where I want that to be stowed and it will stow it in that section. So I can change all these up however I'd like. It can be FM channels, it can be AM channels, or a combination of both and or a combination of all three, including XM channels. So just a real quick uh, uh, short clip on, on the radio and how it works and, and how I can preset some things to, uh, to really get the full entertainment out of that. Of course, I can hit the search button here and then on different profiles, it will set up favorites for different profiles. So as I mentioned before, if you do profiles in this car, it really changes everything about the vehicle to suit that next user. So that's a really, uh, really awesome setup that they have going on here with the new Sync 4 system. That's, that makes it absolutely incredible. Um, I can quickly touch on um, this little section here. So this is gonna be my AC controls and my heated seats. Um, as you can see displayed down here, there is no maximum AC, which is essential to have in uh, Houston, Texas. So how you find that is you'll click this little guy sitting down down here and you'll have max AC button there, recirculate, we have e-heat, so that's gonna be heating the cabin. And then I can click the direction in which I want the airflow to go. So this is facing directly towards me and you can see in this illustration that it's coming out the back seats and then out the dashboard itself. I can click the floor and you're seeing that it's illuminating the floor down there on, on both left, right side and then under the seats. And then I can click windshield and you can see that it is uh, putting air on the windshield. So that's a really quick uh, sort of tutorial. Now I do have duo. So if I click on this and uh, my passenger wants to have a different temperature, they can certainly have that. And if I want a higher or lower temperature than even that, I can either click and drag. And just like I said, I can pull my finger off screen and it will still do the function it's supposed to do. And I can have mine all the way on low. So of course you have left and right limits as far as temperature control. Um, I've showed you that you can uh, change the direction in which the air is flowing on you. Of course, uh, you have AC on, but I have max AC inside of this window only. And then I have three different levels of auto. So I have a low level, I also have a medium and a high level. And then if I wanna just take over and control the fan speed, it's down here next to the radio volume dial, which is an actual dial on screen, which is absolutely incredible. Uh, but it's this fan button right here. I can just click anywhere I want and drag it down or click the off position. If you're not a big fan of the swiping, you can also use, uh, excuse me, you can also use the plus and minus on the fan control uh, and get it to where you want it to go as well. Uh, to the left of that fan, I have a heated steering wheel. I also have heated seats. So the intensity of that, I can turn it all the way up or I can put it on auto, depending on the temperature that I have the car preset to. So if it's on auto and it's, I want the vehicle to be hot, it will not turn on the heated seat. Um, and so thus, you can leave it there if you want to, or you can simply just turn it to the off position. Uh, of course, I have a passenger heated seat. I have the rear uh, window defrost button and max defrost button there. And I also have a power button. If you click this button, it does a really cool ripple effect. And as you notice, it is bringing up my pages here for the radio. If I tap it again, it'll bring it back down and show me what's currently playing. Uh, so now we're gonna move into adding a phone and it's going to be an Apple device that we're gonna add here. Uh, so what we're gonna do is uh, add an Apple device. Uh, I've got this device right here in front of me and I will quickly unlock it for you folks. 
and I've unlocked it here. And I'm just gonna click add device here. I'm gonna go over to settings. I'm gonna click on Bluetooth. I'm gonna search for Mach-E and I've seen it there. So I'm gonna go ahead and click pair and pair. And then for this example, I'm not gonna add contacts, but you certainly could if it's gonna be your final vehicle. For your safety. I'm going to click use CarPlay. I'm going to hit close on this. I'm going to hit finish here. I'm going to say enable on CarPlay. And in a few moments here, CarPlay is going to pop up. And this is what it will look like in its totality. It's full size screen. Now I can uh, make it smaller and have those quick menus from the app page above or I can make them a lot smaller still being there and use the entire segment of CarPlay. This enables you to do is then put your phone on the wireless charge pad. And once I do so, it will indicate up here on the top of the screen that uh, the phone is wirelessly charging via a battery and a lightning bolt. So I don't need to pay attention to my phone at all. I know by looking up here, I've got a quick reference and indicator showing that the battery is currently charging. Uh, this is your CarPlay. Obviously, this is going to be your home screen for CarPlay. Uh, and this is uh, the last uh, song played for this individual here. Uh, but um, this is a, a really nice user-friendly uh, setup. I can, I can click on this and open up full screen Google Maps. I can go over to audio. I can go into this button here and look at all my apps that are capable of being used currently that, uh, that Apple CarPlay and Ford are allowing us to use here. And uh, it's just, it's really convenient. You no longer have to plug in, everything's wireless. I jump in the vehicle, I turn the vehicle on, my CarPlay pops up there. Any phone calls I get will come straight from, uh, from there and I'll be able to talk hands-free. Uh, text will come up over there and uh, they will read them to me and I'll, if I want them to. Uh, and then I can respond by voice over text. And it does a very, very good job. Uh, if you have your Google, uh, let's say you're on an Android and you have your Google um, enabled where you can say, okay, Google, you don't have to click a single button. You can just say, okay, Google, take me to, you know, Sam's Club gas station. She'll give you directions to Sam's Club gas station. If I have a Siri enabled, I can say, hey, Siri, uh, take me to Sam's Club gas station. Uh, and it will automatically pull the navigation for Sam's Club gas station. Now, uh, the CarPlay and the Android Auto have not, uh, they're not integrated like the Ford system is to, uh, to tell you where you need to charge. You can put in presets on there. You can add charging stations to your Google Maps or your Apple Maps uh, and, and, and tell it that you want it to start displaying those. Uh, but um, as far as setting a navigation, I'm not sure if they're fully integrated yet. Uh, that's something I think they're definitely starting to move towards, uh, considering it is uh, it is estimated that approximately 40% of all vehicles on the road will be EV by 2023. Uh, I think they're definitely going to catch up on that technology if they haven't already. Uh, but this is just a really quick way to set up your phone. Now that I have it in Bluetooth, if I set this vehicle up through Ford Pass, I can set a, a backup key. I can use this phone as a key. It's just a, a process that you'll go through that's basically pairing the phone to the vehicle itself and proving that this phone is also an authorized driver for the vehicle. So that is a really deep dive into the 15.5 inch display on this Ford Mach-E. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below this video. We'll do our very best to answer them as fast as we possibly can. And then of course, click that little bell icon and uh, subscribe to our channel so that you can get all the future and upcoming content coming from Mack Hike Ford here in Houston. I appreciate it and thanks. So now on into the main back screen behind the steering wheel. And then we'll also talk about the steering wheel here for this Ford Mach-E. Uh, behind this display, you have a beautiful display for your essential components while driving this vehicle. Uh, components such as showing whether I'm in park, reverse, neutral, drive, or low gear. 
I've also, to the left of that, I've got my miles per hour on ground speed. I think that's pretty cool that they put uh, ground speed in there as if this vehicle could fly, which it can. Um, and then of course I've got 25 miles on the vehicle, so 25.6 to be exact on this one. That's below all my gear selectors. And then lane keeping system is highlighted currently in a silver tone, indicating that I'm not driving currently and there's no lane awareness on the vehicle. Uh, the vehicle's directly in the middle and it shows kind of an aura around it and also says ready to go, which means I have the vehicle currently started up and I'm ready to go. I do show a door to be open, which is the one that you folks are at currently. And then I have uh, the headlights are on and they're set to automatic to the left. And then also it shows uh, a compass showing that I'm headed north currently. I have 86% uh, of battery. I have about 226 miles of range. And then it's showing that I'm going to charge via my navigation system. So while you have your navigation system up and you have your distance set out there, it's gonna kind of show you where you're gonna be at. Um, but like I said, there's not a whole lot I can currently do with this back display. So moving on down to the steering wheel, I have a skip track on the right side, so I can skip right or left. I've got a volume up and down and an OK button should I need to click anything there on the infotainment screen. I've got my push to talk here, and then my answer and hang up for the phone is all one button as well. On the left side of the steering wheel of this Mach-E, I've got the adaptive cruise control. So the distance, if I click cruise control on, I can then change the distance. So I just changed it to four, and then I like my lane centering button to be on. So I'm gonna click this and then say okay. And so now my lane centering button is on. And then for cruise control, I can click the up button. Once I reach the speed that I'd like to, it'd be set plus. I'm just gonna push this button to the up position and it will set that speed. And then if I need to decrease some speed, I can just simply tab it down and I can decrease some speeds. Or if you have that speed sign recognition on there, it will certainly decrease the speed automatically for you. Behind the steering wheel here, you have uh, somewhat of an infrared camera that reads uh, the geometrical shape of your face. And that's basically gonna tell Ford that you are pay attention, you're paying attention to the road ahead. If I turn my head left or right, maybe looking out, uh, you know, at a, a, a nice pasture or so uh, for, for about a minute, minute and a half, it won't do anything. Uh, but just past that, it'll ask you to then put your eyes back on the road in the direction in which you're traveling. So uh, really simple, beautiful look in the design of this steering wheel. It's kind of small and tight, which is kind of feels good. You know, it seems very easy to maneuver. On the left side, I have the toggle switch for the blinker, um, and uh, I can also turn on the high beams by pulling it for me, uh, forward towards me, excuse me. Now, I don't have to do that because I do have it set up on auto high beams, but if I needed to maybe flash somebody, if their headlights are off, I can certainly do that. And then on the right side, uh, this switch here is gonna be for the front windshield wipers and then also for the rear. So at the end on here, it'll actually have the rear's speed and then I can pull it towards me and that'll be washing the windshield and I can push away and that'll be washing the rear window. So that's those two operations. Very, very simple, uh, very easy, elegant design. All right, so a few things that I absolutely love about the Mach-E is gonna be definitely the Alcantara interior on the door panels and running across the dash. The other part that I absolutely love about the Ford Mach-E is this dial. The stereo dial, uh, you know, it's, it's as a creature of habit of just cranking the dial, I love that there is a physical dial on top of this entire screen. Now, a lot of it is touchscreen, and so it is nice to finally have at least one thing that is not touchscreen, um, but that is also on the screen. The other thing that I probably like the best about the Mach-E is the roof. It's totally cool. To look outside that roof is awesome. Alrighty, folks. So in addition to your instrument cluster behind your steering wheel and your steering wheel controls, 
On the left side kick panel over here, I have a max defrost button. Of course, I have your headlight switch uh, just to the right of that. And then to the right of that as well, I have a dimmer switch so I can increase the light on the instrument panel and or the infotainment system right here from clicking the plus and minus. And then if you really wanna get froggy, you can click the traction control off button and just let this thing slide all over the road and then really enjoy it in a high performance situation, maybe on a track or just showing your friends that this thing can do nasty burnouts. All right, Ford family, so that is an in-depth tutorial and review on the all-new Ford Mach-E Mustang. And I'm using Mustang broadly here because we're using that nameplate for the Ford badge on this to really emphasize the new electrification era coming to Ford. And what better to push out that electrification era by using the Ford Mustang logo and badge. Now, that nameplate sports a lot of power and a lot history something this vehicle is without a doubt not lacking at 480 horsepower and some 600 foot pound of torque is an excellent and amazing electric vehicle please leave us a comment below in the description if you liked our video and our in-depth review go ahead and hit that bell icon for future notifications for brand new reviewed vehicles that we upload to our youtube channel down in the description below will be a several Mack Hike Ford locations, including all of the ones in Texas and in Mississippi. I'm Nathan, and thank you so much. Have a great day.